Today, I got a TRX that this gentleman here is gonna let me test drive. Gonna let me do an actual test drive, not a dealer test drive, an actual test drive. An actual test drive. Now, we're just gonna focus on the street today, but eventually, we're gonna do it on dirt. Here in a couple of weeks, we're gonna do it on dirt. We're gonna take my truck out and his truck out, and I think we should probably switch drivers at some point and drive them out. <laughs> What's your Instagram handle? A Metal Gear TRX underscores in between all those. This is his truck right here. It is a 2021 TRX. He's got the rock sliders, which I haven't seen on a truck yet. I really like the way these things look. What other options does this have? It's the uh, level two carbon fiber package. The tow group, the bed group, right? To give you the storage and all that yeah, stuff. The utility package. Uh, the only thing that's missing is some of the bedside decals. And I did not opt to get the uh, twin panel sunroof on it. That's a good thing. That's a very good thing. Twin panel sunroof ends up being a nightmare for off-roading. But as you guys can see, he's actually getting some use out of it, man. It's dirty. Best thing about it. And you uh, you just got one of my decals, so we should see that sticker on there here soon. Yeah, as long as I clean off some of this dirt, yeah. I've been wanting to actually drive these properly for once and see how they handle, so let's get to it. Let's get to it. All right, this is looking nice on the inside. I, you know, a lot of guys say it. the interior on this thing just feels nicer than the Raptor. There's not as much plastic. There's more leather, right? Like this is leather. That's actual leather. It's not fake plastic stuff. It's actual leather. There's more carbon fiber accents. And about the only thing that's that's plastic is this stuff around here. Whereas in the new Raptors, everything in here is plastic and you kind of get some accents and this ugly ass metal piece. So I'm really liking this interior a whole lot more. And then you got the reverse mirror, right? I do. So there's a little camera in that rear taillight, right, for that. The third brake light, yep, and uh, at night comes in real handy, auto dims, and uh, people are sitting back, you can still see right behind you without people's heads in the way. That's cool, so if you have like the dual spares in the back, you can still see out the back. You can still see out the back. So you have it in a custom mode? Most of the time I just have it in auto, which is just daily driving on the streets, pavement, nothing crazy. Do you really notice it get really aggressive in sport mode? I tested it this weekend a lot more, but sport mode definitely, it keeps the transmission and gear longer. Off-road, Baja mode and uh, mud, rock mode, it really comes to life. And the shocks, the way they just uh, respond to all the uh, the pavement, uh, the terrain, you mm -hmm. can actually feel it. I accidentally had it in auto mode, off-roading, not a big deal. It was pretty bumpy. Stuck it in Baja mode, it just leveled everything out. It was like on marshmallows, man, it was just cruising. Yeah, and that's kind of what we're hearing too, right? Baja mode is a lot like the Raptor Baja mode, but it's not as aggressive as the Raptor Baja mode, right? It's, it's more lush. It's a more drivable mode, right? And if you have a Raptor, if you ever drove in Baja mode, most Raptor guys hate Baja mode because they're not driving aggressively enough. You really have to be on the gas. That mode's designed for 65 miles an hour or fast. People don't like to go that fast on dirt. Yeah, it's a little hairy. All right, so let's go ahead and try that. See what this is like. Let's custom mode right now. Let's just go to sport mode if you'd like. Tell you what, she's quiet compared to my loud ass fucking truck. <laughs> you even got the heads up display. That's something I made sure I got on mine. That actually really comes in handy when you're off-roading and keeping your eyes on the, uh, the terrain. And you can customize that too. I have it bare bones right now. Oh, dude, she definitely likes to take off. She just wants to run, dude. Yeah, it's very different. Like she's in dealer mode or whatever. I forget what it's called, right? For the first 1,500 miles or 1,200 miles. Yeah, it's a uh, very subtle. I think it loosens up after. It's smooth. It's surprisingly smooth. It's also soft on the road too. Even though we're in sport mode, you could feel a little bit extra feel on it, right? Yeah, the steering response, the feedback from it, it's a lot livelier. But uh, I like that. But it this is. is this is smoother than the Raptor is. Way smoother. That's been my finding, yeah. Because the Raptor, get, as soon as you put it in sport mode, you like lose that nice little flush. So like if we go to auto, auto is the default mode, right? That's correct. Yeah, you can have it in sport mode. And if you're still driving nice and easy and during stop and go traffic, you won't get those harsh shifts. It'll still mellow out. But then when you get on it, transmission knows you're trying to go and it'll, it'll do its thing. Now in the Raptor, you have that learning computer that unfortunately is a little dopey, right? Once it learns that you're always aggressive, it stays aggressive and it gets very annoying. You have to reset it manually. Every time like I would take it off road and then go drive, it would get to the point where it just got annoying on the freeway because it was just too aggressive. Do you feel like jerkiness to it, right? Mm -hmm. That's what I felt too. That's been my finding as well. Not this thing, man. I've been babying it. My wife drove it a few times. She could totally handle it, no problem. It's docile until you really gun it. The fun part's taking off on the stop. Yeah, but I feel like I don't want to do that because if I break it, then it's <laughs> you break you by type of shit i won't hold you responsible for it, man and if it breaks hey it's we're not gonna launch it right i haven't launched this thing yet with seven thousand miles on it but just flooring it from a go you try that i won't i won't force you man but if you feel inclined to try it out by all means 
the launches I would worry because it, it it's it's a four wheel drive launch, yeah. right? It doesn't two wheel drive it, so that's a lot of pressure on the transfer case. It is, from my reading and understanding, the transfer case comes from a Durango or a, a Cherokee, one of those two. They upgraded the internals with stronger components uh -huh. to handle all the power. How much I don't know, but they must have done a good job if they they knew people were going to modify these, these blowers and pull out a thousand horsepower through them, right? So you would hope. It makes you wonder sometimes what they do with these engines. Are they going close to the limit? or are they you know being conservative because like the the v6 the ecoboost 450 is very conservative for that thing they can put slightly larger turbos on that thing and get a whole lot more power out of that v6 but you may lose some reliability there i was always afraid of that i'm a horsepower junkie and just like you said um i don't know how how much power those things would take Damn, yeah, you can even feel it in the steering wheel, dude. Yeah, man, that thing jerks you still a little bit of a yeah. shitty there. That's fucking crazy. That was in regular mode, dude. That wasn't anything custom or nothing. It's auto. So this is completely different than the Gen 1. So the Gen 1 with the Roush, don't get me wrong, it, it's still a good setup and it's a setup that I wanted to run because I didn't want to deal with the lazy V8, but it still feels lazy. This doesn't feel lazy at all, dude. It's very responsive, man. And it's smooth, it's not jerky, it's, it, I hate to say it, but it's refined, right? Because you hear the car guys use it all the time, it's refined. <laughs> it really is, man. It feels weird saying it, but it is so much nicer, you know? When, when in my younger days, I didn't care how refined a transmission was, because my body can take it, man. Yeah. But now, off-road, I have my kids on the back, and they're just having a good time with their juice cup or whatever. They don't feel a thing, they're just enjoying the view. Transmission really shines on this thing. And I'm not just trying to convince myself that this was a good choice in buying. It really is a good truck, man. You had a Gen 2, right? I had a Gen 2, and I love that thing to death. And I won't say anything bad about it. Holy crap, dude. And that is like, it's light on its feet when you're at that speed, too. Yeah. You can feel the suspension doing its job, you know, like cushioning everything out so that it stays level. So I, I read about that and saw that in the blog that this thing has a strategy where it tries to stay level when it's going down the road. It's a completely different thing when you feel it because you can, you can feel the suspension doing its thing and it's still staying perfectly level. It's a trip. It is a very true, man. It feels like you're floating almost. Yeah, exactly. It, and, and this is something I've talked to a lot of guys about, right? It's completely different strategies. I know a lot of guys talk down this truck because it has two and a half inch shocks. That really isn't its limitation. Yes, could it do better with three inch shocks? Of course it can. But what really shines on that suspension is the valve and the strategy that they're using to control the valve. Eventually in the future, if they come out with upgrades, I will upgrade them just mm -hmm. because I like upgrading vehicles, right? And seeing what they can really do. From the factory, straight off the floor, it's, it's great, man. So let's go to to Baja Road. I want to see what that's like. If you don't mind? No. I think we're going to go. She already sounds different. Oh yeah, she sounds way different. So does Baja Mode pump in more supercharger noise in the cab? I think it's because the transmission allows it to stay in higher revs uh -huh. that you actually hear it more. I think, but yeah, you like that noise, right? That's yeah, the it, one. it was it's instantly awesome. louder. I wonder if they're doing something like they do with the Ford, right? Where they pipe in noise into the cab. It can change it. I wouldn't be surprised. If they do, that kind of sucks. I was hoping it was all natural, but... Because it, it came, the noise came out at a lower RPM. It was still at like, let's see, right there. It's making it more. Even from the bottom. Let's turn that up. You know, let's go back to, uh, let's go back to normal. We're at about 1,500 RPMs. Oh yeah, there's a difference. Yeah, there is a difference, huh? So I'm wondering if if um, there's like a little valve or something that it's uh, allowing more noise in or something. Dude, we're definitely gonna have to do some proper trails on this thing. Oh, I'm so for that. Do you want to go straight and put it in sport mode and just launch it? Just a little gas brake? I usually like to just touch the, uh, the pad up here. It's yeah, because this gets annoying. Yeah. So that's what I would say is this is annoying. And it is. So, all right, and just go? Yep. I know that's it's this truck's gimmick, but goddamn, that's nice. Right? Ah, dude, that's nice. And it does that off-road as well, man. I was just flooring it this weekend, and uh, I will drive just, just, just goes, man. That is nuts, though, dude. Like, there's no clunk in it too when it takes off. You, I, I would almost expect a clunk sometimes too because of what you're doing, right? You're still using, it's all going through a transfer case. Oh yeah. I know this is kind of gimmicky too, but I really like the uh, performance pages. I think this is the only drawback I've noticed because all the systems have it. Loading anything that's not default takes so long. 
Yeah, this right here has been my only finding. The performance page just takes it a minute to get all the uh, telematics, I think it is, from the engine and everything else. Well, you got to think about the processing power of these things, right? It's not really designed to run stuff like this. They've adapted it to run stuff like this. So it takes a while to load. And if we're off-road, I would want to see this. I do. I keep my eyes on that uh, oil pressure and temperatures religiously when I'm off-roading. Can you customize the gauges up here so you can see that stuff up here? Yeah, the four little gauges you see on the outside of the little 70 screen in there. Mm -hmm. You can customize each one of those gauges. And then the center, you can also customize that, of course, with all sorts of different settings, off-road, the shocks, your transfer cases, whether they're locked or unlocked, all sorts of stuff you can customize it. There's almost nothing you can't see. Okay. So I do have a little road over here. You mind if we take it? No, it's fine, man. It's dirt. I'm not going to go crazy because it's residential, but I just <laughs> want to see how it handles, you know, just some mild stuff. Yeah. I love the heads-up display. I got to tell you that, man, because I... I'm short, so finding a position that's comfortable that doesn't block the gauges is tough. And I get a lot of shit for being sharp, but fuck you guys. It's genetics. I can't I can't do anything about it. But that heads-up display keeps my eyes on the road, dude, and I love it. Yeah, you can customize it too. It can go higher, it can go lower, depending on your, your height and your view. Again, very customizable. The Supercharger one is so good. I wish I heard more of that in the uh, Roush truck. So I used to take this road a lot to take my kids to their friend's house. And it's one of those things where you try to be the cool dad and you take it a little fast. <laughs> so let's try, uh, I want to see how smooth this can get. Now mind you, this is just a regular mild road. It's not nothing crazy, but it's one of those roads that is fun to take fast. Well, you shouldn't be taking it fast. Dude, this road is normally washboarded out. And you feel a little bit of vibration but nowhere near like you do on the Gen 2 where it's like vibrating the whole truck. This is smooth. And I see what you mean too about when you put it in Baja mode, it gets a little nimble. It doesn't feel as heavy. It feels a little bit lighter on road. That was my big takeaway from this weekend. Yeah, I just gained so much confidence in it. I thought the Gen 2 that I had was gonna beat it in some of the little courses that I've done with it before. And just from my own personal opinion, and maybe I'm a little biased here because I own the Ram, but this thing was just so much better. And I do mean much better. It was just quicker, faster. I was able to handle a lot better. The steering, I think, is a lot more responsive than second gen. And the suspension just handled everything like a boss, man, even with the extra added weight. So the one thing I will tell you about the steering that I like is there's no dead spot. That is a huge deal to me because the gen 2 steering has a massive and i mean massive dead spot on it to the point that it actually changes the way you uh drive because it's got such a big dead spot you have to drive it almost like you do some of the race trucks i don't know if you've ever seen a race car driver their hands are never still they're constantly going side to side when they're driving and let me show you on camera right so like on the gen 2 I'm constantly doing this while I'm going down the road, right? I'm doing adjustments like that because the dead spot is so large and because I had so many problems with the steering. With this thing, it's there. There's no dead spot. I don't feel a single bit of deadness in here. Even in like in sport mode, guys, you, there was a dead, there's a dead spot in the Gen 2 steering, even in sport mode. I'm not feeling that at all in this thing. So I would say, yeah, the steering's a big thing. And that was one of the biggest problems I had with my Gen 2. And this thing, it just feels like night and day. I think it's different when there. The strategy and the responsiveness of the shocks is it's different and it's smoother i still want to see how this handles on high speed stuff though right because like right here i'm not gonna go yeah, this is too day you know it's too populated or whatnot to go that fast but you can already see that this is smooth I took it out. Not once did I feel like a rut or some other uh, formed area on the dirt. I didn't feel anything pull me off the road. So I made my path and I stuck to it and the truck just went right through everything. Previous vehicles I've had, including the Raptor, depending on the rut, of course, or the pothole, or whatever, it would give the truck a little feedback and kind of send it in the, the, the wrong direction. This thing, it hasn't happened to me yet. So I'm not sure if it's just luck so far or, or the steering is that good, but so far so good, man. Do you know if this is hydraulic or electronic steering? This should all be electronic. It's electronic, man. It's a completely different strategy. Maybe different software that they're employing or something to uh, to really get that different feel. Cause that was, that was different. That was smoother. That was more controlled. There's no dead spot. Oh, dude, you gotta make me like not cancel my TRX order now. <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> this is so much easier, by the way, to switching modes than this. This is so clunky. It's like you're constantly searching through the modes and it's annoying. It's very annoying. That's one thing that the Raptor definitely had uh, or has an upper hand on the, the switching now, over there. This is a much better test drive than I took with the dealer and 
Fuck. Fuck. Because <laughs> I got that really cool Gen 1, and I know that Gen 1's going to be capable, very, very capable, but it's not going to be anywhere near as comfortable as this. The thing that, that I like about this, right, it's already a V8. It's already got 700 horsepower. Imagine what you could do if you put on big shocks on this thing. Yeah, I'm looking forward to companies making out kits for these things. Eventually, down the line, I like to go like yeah. mid-travel with this thing. Dude, how great would it be if King did one of their active shocks and made it so that it works with this setup? Oh, it'd be amazing, dude. So that you don't lose that active valve. Because like in the Raptor, I wanted to get rid of the active valve because it got so annoying. Yes, it was one of its better features and allowed you to do more, but it was annoying on washboards because it was the system was just too slow. This thing, on the other hand, just in the little bit we've driven today, just seeing and how it tries to keep it level, how it tries to keep it smooth, makes you want to preserve some of that functionality, you know? I definitely agree with you there, man. I had a 2018, so I didn't have the active shocks, mm -hmm. but a lot of people were swapping out the 19 and up Gen 2s and getting rid of that feature. Yeah, because it's annoying. It was just annoying. The only time it's good for the way they configured it was for a jump, that's it. That was it. Because it would lock out the, or the shocks, right? It would get them ready for that rebound or that, that exactly. landing. Exactly, exactly. But on regular day to day, the system was too slow to deal with rough terrain. So washboards, they had a real hard time with that. Little jumps, it didn't have that great of a time with it. And it, it had no sensors in the back. So the back always reacted based on the front. So it would like buck everywhere you went. So it wasn't cool. So yeah, like most, I would want to disable that on the Gen, on the Gen 2. On this though, I'd almost want to preserve it because it's a completely different strategy. I think when we go out, man, hopefully here in two weeks, if I get my truck back, I think we should go to Lucerne Valley where I do most of my testing. Well, we took this last guy and I think you and I should take turns going through that, some small sections. And then we should drive over to Powerline Road where we can hit 85, 95 miles an hour on the trails and really like get a handle as to how smooth this thing is. Yeah, man, totally interested in that. That'll be a fun time. Oh, yeah. um, it'll be a long day, but it'll be so much fun. Dude. I want to see what it does at higher speeds. The fastest I've gone off-road on similar roads to where we were just on, it's uh -huh. about 70. Uh -huh. I haven't gotten serious air on this thing yet, but I really so, want to see what, what it does. As far as jumps go, I'll, I'll be honest with you. If we take a jump with this thing, we're going to bend yours bumpers <laughs> it's going down yeah it's going down because if we try to do just any old jump you're gonna destroy the the bumper that's that's a given if even if we find like a nice jump there's one in our still that's pretty nice you're still gonna mess up your your skid plate some way or another because you're gonna be using all your suspension to do it the only time you won't damage that skid plate and this is like one of my biggest contentions with this thing is when you're doing one of those manicured jumps on a track uh, that are designed to land you soft that's the only time you won't mess up your skid plate and that's what I hate that they, we've only seen it do that. But yeah, that's not exactly realistic to what we actually face all the time. Well, so that, that would be the one thing, man. If we do a jump, just you gotta be un understanding that you're gonna you're gonna damage that bumper no matter what. I got a little rock rash on it already. So, I mean, I bought the truck to use it. It's definitely not just to go get Starbucks. Ah, that's awesome to hear. Well, there you go, guys. We filmed that video a couple weeks ago and I was fairly impressed with the TRX. It's manners on the street were a lot smoother than what the Raptor could do. And a little bit of dirt that we did, it was way smoother than the Raptor, way more level, not all over the place, not as rough. And that power is intoxicating. I mean, I know we, we say it a lot, you don't need that much power off road, but God damn was all that extra power nice way more powerful than this thing. As far as what we're gonna do with ours, we are gonna do some more testing with that truck. He's committed to come out and do some trails with us. We're gonna have him do some trails, we're gonna switch trucks so he can see what it feels like to have a mid-travel truck. And I'm gonna see what it's like to drive that truck on trails, right? So I actually finally get to do some serious trails with it. So definitely looking forward to that. Now, as far as our TRX, well, we made the hard decision to not get the TRX. We're actually gonna cancel our order. And there's a good reason for it. I'm still behind on the Raptor videos, but rehabbing of the Gen 1 has gone way, way over budget. We found a lot of little issues with the suspension and it just our costs have gone up. And we had to make the tough choice. Do we wanna spend the money and get this truck right and really have some fun with this thing? Or do we wanna spend all that money on the TRX? And having two builds is also gonna be very, you know, very expensive, it's gonna drain our savings. So at the end of the day, the only way we're gonna get the TRX is if the wife gets rid of her Jeep and we did the math and the extra cost. You know, we're looking at close to a $1,400 payment if we finance that thing. So we made the tough choice of canceling our TRX. And we're gonna spend the time to really rehab the Gen 1, make that right. Filming of this video, we actually already taken the Gen 1 off-road and I've been impressed by the mid-travels road manners. It's just it, just what it can handle, it's so much more. And it's given me that security to really have more flexibility on the trails. On top of that, I can't rely on dealers on this truck, so I've been working on it more and more. And even though some of the fixes have been a little bit frustrating, I'm having a ton more fun working on the Gen 1 
and not having to worry about the deal network, not having to worry about warranties or anything like that, just enjoying working on the truck, going out there and playing with it. So I think that's the direction we're gonna go with, guys. I know it's gonna be disappointing for some of you guys, just there's not enough income coming in from this YouTube channel to cover the disparity of the payment and all that stuff, and we're not gonna be able to afford two big expensive builds like that. So I know it's not the news you guys wanted to hear, but we do have a few TRX guys that are committed to joining our runs, and we're still gonna explore what the TRX can do, and we may even get behind the wheel on a couple of times and really show you guys what that truck can do. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. See you guys on the next one.